Hello and welcome everybody to today's webinar. My name is Donovan Brady and I'm the Solutions Architecture Lead at LogicWorks. And today I'm going to be talking about how to deploy a multi-account architecture in AWS. So at every company, multiple teams are going to have different requirements for whatever the team is, for whatever the access requirements are for the employees, for the engineers. So for example, as you can see here, if you have a different team for compliance, for web applications, for accounting, and a client portal, each one of them is going to have to have different requirements for access. We don't want to give your compliance team or your accounting team access to your databases or your Git repositories. And similarly, we don't want to give your application developer teams billing access, right? So how do you actually manage the access requirements in your environment? Well, there are a few different ways that you could do that. One, you could do that with a traditional VPC hub and spoke model where you have different VPCs that govern your applications, and then you just have IAM roles and IAM permissions that have access to each environment. So, as you can see here on the left side, we have a simple client portal network that just has some web instances. The client portal team has IAM access to it, the compliance team has IAM access to it, and nobody else. On the right side, you see your web application network where the web application team has access and the compliance team has access. Meanwhile, the accounting team has access to AWS Cost Explorer or any other third-party tool that you would use to manage your cost optimization. Now, it's a beautiful architecture, but what happens if you have multiple levels of separation? Let's say you have a production environment, you have a development environment, stage, whatever the different SDLC tiers are. Well, then you get into a little bit of an issue, right? Because everything is going to be housed in the same VPC. As you can see on the left-hand side, you're going to have production and dev both within the same VPC. Or on the right-hand side, you could see production and dev actually share the same database, which is a big no-no. So how do we manage that? We would have a multiple account structure where you have a centralized management account. And then under that account, we have different accounts for each team or each environment. And then in these accounts, you can have a different tier for your production, tier for your stage, or a tier for your dev. Everything is nice and neatly separated, and you don't have to worry about commingling of information. You could also separate your accounts by business need. For example, if you have compliant data like PCI or HIPAA data for one application, and then you have four applications that don't have any PCI or HIPAA requirements, you could separate your accounts that way so that during your audit, you only have to audit that first account that has that HIPAA or PCI data. You can have administrative isolation between your workloads where different engineers for different teams have different access permissions for different projects. There's limited visibility and discoverability of workloads and a minimized blast radius. Now, I would kind of put these two bullet points together because they're sort of uh, talking to the same point from different standpoints. So for the first one is for security. Let's say uh, for worst case scenario, if there were a breach, and somebody had access to your environment, they would not be able to see every one of your applications or every one of your accounts if you have a distributed tiered architecture with multiple accounts. Similarly, if you have a, uh, multiple accounts, you have a minimized blast radius should one component fail, should one application go down. Finally, there's strong isolation for auditing data, as we just mentioned, by that business need. So if you have compliant workloads in one account, you don't have to worry about those other non-compliant applications being audited during your audits. So what's the best way to implement a multi-account structure in AWS? Well, AWS Landing Zone. AWS Landing Zone is a prescriptive, secure, multi-account AWS environment that's a great starting point for large-scale AWS migrations. It allows for expansion over time because it allows for easily repeatable processes to deploy multiple accounts for different business requirements different business units, different teams, or applications. It allows you to define baseline requirements for each account while providing separation of concerns for each one of those accounts, including the core units in each core account that we'll get to in a little bit. You have logically separated environments that helps to prevent unintended changes in production, and it limits your threat exposure by minimizing footprint in a single account. So this is what we were talking about a little bit earlier about if there is a breach or if, uh, if there's a failure, 
then all of your applications won't be compromised. Only a single application or a single account might be compromised should something go wrong. And finally, my favorite part of the landing zone, automation. We'll get into the automation framework in a little bit, but long story short, it allows for a really easy way to automate the process of deploying new accounts in AWS. So here's what the landing zone architecture looks like. At the top level, it uses AWS organizations that manages a master organization's account. Now you can see in the master organization's account, it uses services like Lambda, CloudFormation, and Service Catalog to actually describe what your permissions are and then inform each of, the, each of the subsequent accounts thereafter. These accounts are created by something called the account vending machine that you'll see on the right. And the account vending machine and service catalog work together to actually deploy each account automatically with all of the designated permissions and requirements that you dictate. Then there are three core unit accounts or however many core unit accounts that you decide. But by default, there are the shared services account, the logging account, and the security account. The logging account and the security accounts will have a default VPC disabled by default, and then they will have CloudTrail, Config, and all of your logging enabled in every one of the accounts. I mentioned that there are three core unit accounts by default, but you can also have other core unit accounts like networking or billing tools should you need it. Many large scale migrations actually do need a networking environment so that you can have something like a transit VPC or a transit gateway that would allow for BGP or any sort of network address translation that you might need to do in your migration from your data center. So to give you guys a couple of real life use cases that LogicWorks has done landing zones for, the first would be a large bank. So uh, you can see our redacting skills are amazing. Uh, the large bank had difficulty getting everybody on the same page. Every team wanted to configure and control AWS differently. And there are hundreds of regulatory control environments, each project requiring a different subset of the requirements. They had multiple different business units, and each business unit had different applications and different access policies for each. They really had these things well-defined in their on-premises environments, but by the time they got to AWS, they really didn't want to disrupt their existing roles, but they needed them to stay integrated. So as you can see here, this is just a small subset of their diagram, but we have a direct connect that's managing the data flow from their on-premises deployments into their AWS environment, into their networking account. Now this networking account is one of those core units that they added beyond the default three. But as you can see, there's a WAN VPC holding uh, dual Cisco CSRs that's going to handle their NAT translations and their BGP and their connectivity into their environment. And then in the top right, you'll see they have a shared services account that's going to hold their Bastion hosts and their Active Directory and their automation tools like Ansible and Puppet. These automation tools are what allow for automated configuration management and deployment in the rest of their environment. Finally, you'll see down in the Applications account, they have a VPC with the, the different shared applications like their Jira tools, their Atlassian suite like Confluence, and the databases that hold most of that information. As you can see, the separation of, of accounts allows for a lot of granular access, but also management of each account. You can manage your logging account and the different associated CloudTrail and config logs, the security account that's going to have its threat detection and vulnerability scanning, and every other application account thereafter. Another use case that we did was a multi-billion dollar asset management firm that migrated hundreds of applications into AWS. They wanted to reduce their audit scope and they spent millions of dollars a year on PCI DSS compliance. So how were they going to best manage this? Well, we decided to ultimately have five different accounts. We separated it by business need so that we had their production regulated and non-regulated accounts where their regulated account had the PCI requirements and the non-production regulated and non-production non-regulated where the, these are development and test environments that are going to have test data that has personally identifiable or PCI data. And then the final master account that's going to be dictating what the different rules, roles, and access policies are. We used the account vending machine to ensure that each child account that was built was built according to predefined templates. Again, you can see the architecture here. It's a little messier, but you can see that from their on-premises and deployments, 
traffic came through to their networking account through their transit VPC. They used a Fortinet in their transit VPC instead of a Cisco CSR, but really you can mix and match whatever you need. Their data went from the transit VPC into their applications account, where you can see they used a lot of AWS's AI ML tools, like AWS Glue, EMR clusters, Lambda, and S3 to manage their data lake. Again, you can see the separation of tiers and the separation of concerns having a different account for their applications and a different account for their networking while also maintaining the landing zone structure with the logging account, security account, and shared services account. Now, I've talked a lot about this account vending machine concept, and I said that I really like it, but I didn't give you guys too much insight into what it actually does. So as you see here, the account vending machine resides in the master organization's account at that top level that we were talking about before. And it uses AWS Service Catalog and Lambda to actually define what each account is supposed to have. So let's say you have a developer account for one application tier, and you only want that developer account to have access to S3, Lambda, and EC2. If you were just doing this in a single account, you'd have to manage that with IAM permissions. However, using AWS organizations and the account vending machine, you can automatically provision each account to only have access to these services. So the developers who have access to that account will only actually see S3, EC2, and Lambda in their environment. Then you'd also have Lambda pushing resources to your logging account so that you can have that logging and audit trail into a single centralized S3 bucket. Landing Zone is a perfect solution for a SaaS company for multiple different reasons. Everything that we just mentioned before, as well as the opportunity to manage single tenant applications. Let's say you, every time you deploy a new customer, every customer gets their own environment. That means they're going to get their own isolated database, they're going to get their own isolated EC2 instances, and all of their own security permissions for their own application. This is really easily managed using the account vending machine in the AWS Landing Zone framework. Each customer will get their same account, and they're not going to have any shared data across accounts. I've saved the best for last, the one that everybody wants to talk about most when moving to the cloud, billing. So as you can see, it's really easy to manage cross-account billing. So you have your master account that breaks out into each single AWS account thereafter. And you can bring this to your CEFO and say, hey CFO, we can see that AWS account number five is spending way too much money at $428, and AWS account number four is only spending five, so they're doing great. They're probably using serverless and Lambda and all of the really cheap functions. So if you had this all in one AWS account, you'd have to have complex tagging rules and have complex chargeback functions to understand what applications and what teams are really spending the most amount of money. But if you separate based on different accounts, it's really easy to see at a top level what account is spending what amounts of money. So to summarize, Landing Zone is a great solution for really complex regulated AWS deployments. Why is that? Because we want to templatize and automate everything that we do. Templates are way better than manual work. We don't ever want to have to do something manually that we can automate. SaaS companies make their money by building applications for their customers, not by managing infrastructure. So anytime that you can get infrastructure to manage itself, we would prefer that. You have governance through automation. Your team should really carefully evaluate whether or not you should create multiple VPCs or multiple accounts because there are different service limits associated with different VPCs and you really don't want to mix data between different VPCs and different applications. Thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Just a little bit about LogicWorks. We're a leading provider of managed services and cloud migration services. If you need help deploying an AWS landing zone, we are an official AWS subcontractor of their professional services team. If you need help or need any more information, feel free to contact us or visit our website. Thank you.